I'm going to read from John 15, verses 1 through 5, and I think be familiar to many of you, and then verses 12 and 13. And I chose these for this occasion. Um, we actually dealt with this text in our Bible study last Sunday, and that's a shameless plug for the Bible study. It happens every Sunday at, at noon on Zoom. The link is on the homepage of our website. We always have wonderful conversations, so join us if that's of interest to you. But listen for these well-known words from Jesus. Jesus said, I'm the true vine, and God is the vine grower. God removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, God prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already experienced pruning by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it remains in the vine, neither can you unless you stay in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who dwell in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you cannot make it happen. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. And greater love than this has no one to lay down one's life for one's friends. So before I get into today's text, I want to say a few words about our church. You know, I meet so many people who, when they hear I'm a minister, and you, by the way, I don't usually lead with that. You know, I don't wear a collar. I don't go around. You know, I, I kind of like people to just find out in a roundabout way. I, I'd rather have people know who I am rather than me by an office. But when they find out, it's amazing how often we get into a conversation. And before long, things along these lines come up. Well, you know, I don't go to church. But I believe in God, or I, I think I do. I'm spiritual. But to tell you the truth, I have a hard time trusting churches. And organized religion in general, for that matter. And then very often people say something along the lines of, uh, I've been burned by the church. I mean, it is amazing how much I hear that. People feel like they, they were burned by a church, meaning they were somehow painfully let down or hurt or disappointed. And I get it. And, and often all I can do is listen. Sometimes I apologize. Actually, I enjoy being an ordained minister and sometimes I say, you know, as an ordained minister, I want to apologize to you on behalf of the church. And it's amazing how often that makes people cry. Have a minister say, I'm so sorry that you were hurt like that. But I love being able to say, you know, McFarland UCC or the church I'm involved with, you know, we're not perfect, trust me. And, you know, if you come around and you get to know me, I'm going to apologize in advance because I'm going to let you down. But I will promise you, if you hang around this church, you will never get burned. Because I can promise you that while we're thoroughly imperfect here, we are a bunch of people who are trying our best with God's help to lead with love and to welcome everybody and to make sure you know that the deepest part of the message is that you're loved just the way you are no matter what has happened to you, no matter what you've gone through, no matter where you are, no matter what questions, mistakes, detours you've taken. We just want you to know you're loved. Come on home to that. And we're having a good time trying to live that out. Put some flesh on those bones. I'm trying to see which parts I can skip. Just bear with me. I chose this morning's text from John 15 
because of this focus on our 45th anniversary. It offers a powerful metaphor for how spiritual growth of individuals and of a community actually happens. Jesus makes it very simple, actually. He says, I, Jesus, am the vine. You're the branches. Stay connected to me, and you will grow and bear fruit. God will see to it. God is cultivating your growth. You can't pull it off on your own, but God can. And if you're listening to me now and you don't really know what this means, you know, to be part of the vine or something like, you know, and you're just beginning the process of wondering if there really is a God and there's more to this, then talk to me, all right? Contact me and let's talk about that. But the reason I chose the text is this. We listen to it closely. Jesus immediately gets into something that many individuals and churches have a hard time recognizing, let alone understanding, let alone accepting and embracing, let alone celebrating as an essential aspect of their history or their personal growth. And Jesus says, if you stay close to me, abide in me, if you are connected so deeply to me that my life is your life and the spirit is flowing deep within you like nutrients and sap on the inside of a tree or a vine that causes the growth, then God, the vine grower, the gardener, the one who cultivates and guides and lovingly pays attention to our lives, God is going to prune you. Not just trim us or shape us. I mean, that sounds kind of nice, doesn't it? God, that, that's, there's a difference between pruning and primping. Jesus says God is going to sometimes actually remove things, cut things away that are no longer alive but that are still hanging on to a point at which they're preventing our growth and harming our full flourishing. It's love in a process that is painful for a time, changing things, removing things that are in the way, things that we can't or sometimes just won't remove ourselves, for the good of everyone. Now, if you heard that, that's deep, isn't it? It sounds potentially painful, right? And that's because it is. And like so many deep spiritual truths, it would be easy to hear this in an unhealthy way. So be careful. Because if we hear it wrong, then it's going to make God seem cruel or cause us to think that every time we experience a serious loss that God is pruning us, that's not what it says. It says there are times when God removes things so that we can grow. Another way of putting it. If we're serious about our spiritual lives, God is going to show up as a process and I love this quote from Paula Darcy, a retreat leader, author. She says, God often shows up to us disguised as our life. God will show up in a process that may be painful in the short run, but that will make all the difference in the long run. As many spiritual teachers have put it, spiritual growth often happens more through subtraction by being willing to let things go. Things that aren't true anymore for us, or real. All right, I think most of us can probably work personally with what I just said. If you look at your life and you're on a spiritual journey, you can see ways, you might not wanna see them, but you might be in the midst of something right now, or you can look back at your life and how you've grown and you see some of this active. Personally, I much prefer getting to a point where I willingly release things 
or let things go. We've talked about this before. Rather than getting to a point where it has to be removed somehow through a, a, a less gentle process. I've experienced both. Gentle is better. In one of my own more personal times of being pruned in my life, I wrote a song. I think I may have shared this chorus with you before, but for those of you who are new, the chorus of the song goes like this. This is good for me, though I'm falling apart in a thousand pieces. I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy, but it's clear to me the big love's doing some surgery. So mystery, I'm going to trust you're a brilliant surgeon, though I must say you're a lousy anesthetist. The only solace that you give is a strange sense that this is a painful gift. All right, so what does this pruning metaphor have to do with the 45th anniversary of this church? Well, I've been here for almost four years now, and I have loved hearing the stories of this church's history. It's one of my favorite things when I visit people and hear about your personal history and journey with this congregation or your spiritual life. But the chapter of this church's history that moves me the most because of how remarkable it is is the story of what this congregation went through about 15 or 20 years ago in order to become a, quote, open and affirming congregation. That's the phrase that we use in the United Church of Christ to let everyone know that we welcome and fully embrace all people here regardless of sexual identity or orientation or gender identity. Um, it's the process that led this congregation to the formulation of those beautiful words of welcome that we start every worship service with. Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, we get that partly from the UCC as a denomination, but you're welcome here. And as I said last week, I think those are among the most important words that we say each week, week in and week out. But this congregation did the hard work of moving through a difficult experience of pruning. There were members 15 or more years ago connected to the church who argued strongly against same-gender same sexuality, claiming it wasn't biblical. A bunch of people left. You went through a very difficult, I mean, it is heartbreaking when people decide they no longer can resonate with what's going on in a church so much so that they have to leave. And I think, I mean, we long to be a community where everybody can show up as who they are and be safe, regardless of what your opinion is, what your take on things are. We may have to sometimes agree to disagree, even strongly and passionately, but we do that in a spirit of love. But now and then, those times come where people need to be given a clear opportunity. You know, I either resonate with what this church stands for, or I may need to go elsewhere. And this church did not ask anybody, and will never, not, but you endured that time. And my point is just simply, I want to honor and thank those of you, charter members, and there are a bunch more of you who were around for that whole process. And remember you, because what you did then, painful as it was, sowed the seeds that grew you into the church that now is who we are, where it's very clear that everyone is welcome here. And that that's a big part of what we stand for, not because we're progressive or uh, nice or anything like that, but because that's how we understand God. So I want to say thank you for doing that hard work. You know who you are. And I know that that experience of being pruned took you to the edge of yourself, a lot of you. But you stuck in there and you stayed with God and you're still here. So one more round of applause for everybody who saw this church through that time. All right, so I'm going to end by returning to those conversations that I alluded to at the beginning of the service. You know, so often, once we get past the issue of 
people having been burned by a church. People tell me, well, you know, I'm spiritual, but I'm just not into organized religion. And my friend Brian McLaren, um, who we prayed for earlier, the one from, from Marco Island, he says that when people tell him they don't believe in organized religion, his response is usually something like, well, yeah, I get it. But what's the better alternative? Disorganized religion? He, said, he says, we need organized spirituality and religious structures that are organized around a better message and better principles and better ways of reading the Bible. And that's exactly what God is doing in history all over the place right now. Inviting us to allow ourselves to let go of some ideas, some understandings, even of some of the basic biblical stories. That's why we've been going through the Garden of Eden story, and we'll continue next week with that. It's hard to rethink something or even to let go of uh, always being right. I wanted to end with this. People say often once they get who we are, and this is not in any way you know, like patting ourselves on the back in some egoistic way. But people say, man, I didn't know a church like this existed. I mean, is this for real? And what a joy it is to be able to say absolutely. We're not the only one. And then the conversation often goes here. People say, well, you know, I get my spirituality from, you know, my meditation group or uh, my yoga classes sometimes do it for me or, um, you, you know, other places. And they said, but I kind of miss Jesus. And I usually say, well, you know what? You don't ever need to be without Jesus, without Christ. And it might be time to let go of an old understanding of who Jesus is that's just too small. Because the Jesus I know is always with you, even when you don't know it. Right there in your meditation, in your recovery group, your yoga, your Judaism, Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism, Jainism, Sikhism, shamanism. The Jesus we know is in the midst of anything that's true and that connects you with the spirit. So bring it all with you. It's all about love and truth and God's extravagant welcome to all people to know themselves as unconditionally worthy and beautiful. And then the Jesus who is the church's one foundation is always right here, right with us, and for us. Amen.